hope you're all well. Welcome back to another video. We are now six days till Christmas. I'm so excited. Um, this video isn't actually a Christmas themed video, unfortunately, I know. I know. Um, but I do have my Christmas earrings on, so if that's any, like, festive spirit right there. Today I'm going to be talking about what I think makes a great picture. Um, this is just my humble opinion. So the reason why I thought I would make this video is because on Wednesday I had a photo shoot with a friend and I really want to take you guys with me and do like a little behind the scenes so you can see how I work and just yeah, see how the process is. And I think a lot of the things I'm going to talk about in this video you're going to see in practice in that one. So enough of that. Let's get started. I'm going to go into what I think it takes to make a great photograph. Photography is one of those things that is, like all arts, incredibly subjective. So what I think makes a great photograph may not necessarily be the same thing that you think might make a great photograph. But I think that that's okay. I think that actually that, allow, that degree of freedom actually allows us to play both by the rules and break all of them. So, and still be right. Like, there's no right or wrong answer. Some of the stuff I'm going to recommend here is just the stuff that I think, personally, makes a great picture. It might not be necessarily what you think makes a great picture, and that's okay, because like I said, there's no rules. It's actually okay. It doesn't matter if you're not there yet, because somebody out there is going to love your work. And then the more you keep working and sharpening your craft, the better your pictures will naturally become anyway. So, I feel like... This is an evolution, even like right now from the vantage point that I'm speaking from, it's not like my pictures are anything fantastic, no. All it is is that along the way I have learned a lot of lessons and I apply them, but every single picture I try to make better than my last picture. So I think I read an article where the photographer said, oh yeah, my favorite picture is my next photo. and. I think that's actually not a bad way to look at it because it means that for your next picture you're going to try harder and you're going to learn the lessons from the previous one and it's just progress like that's how you evolve and that's really just how you grow um, so don't feel that oh maybe my pictures aren't there yet but you know what in time they will be because you're going to be practicing and you're going to be working hard and that is essentially what takes you from A to B anyway like nothing else like between here and here ton of work. So the first thing that always strikes me whenever I look at a photo is the subject. Now this could be you know a portrait, a landscape, um, a still life. So the thing the subject is connected to I think quite closely is the story. What is the story behind this photograph? Sometimes the subject is uncomfortable to look at um, or may not be something that's very beautiful but the story is really beautiful and it's a story that essentially will add value to the subject. So I think that also should contribute into what makes a great picture because even though the story is intangible, um, the story behind the picture actually adds another element to that photograph. So the story is one thing, the subject is another. So the next thing that would probably strike you is a location. Like was it taken in studio? Was it taken outside? Was it taken um, in a beautiful house? Like what is the location adding to the story? Fashion photography is one of those genres that treats location very playfully. Um, the subject doesn't necessarily have to connect to it. You know, you can have these like beautiful, beautiful clothes and you know, the backdrop is, I don't know, an old school or a rundown um, mill, but I don't know why I thought that. But all it does is just add to the story that something unusual is happening here. So essentially I think the stronger the story, maybe the stronger the photograph. Um, the next thing, lighting. So lighting is one of those things where I think if you want to be a great photographer, you have to pay attention to, you can't not. Um, just because it adds so much, like say for example when you're shooting with natural light, there are times in the day when that natural light is the prettiest. And that would usually be first thing in the morning, like just as the sun is rising and everything goes all like soft tones, very dewy and rose colored, um, misty, like the light is so beautiful. Um, and then during like the middle of the day, it's not as great unless, you know, you have a really overcast day like we have in the UK, um, more often than not, in which case the lighting is, you know, really soft and 
quite diffused and actually I quite like it, I prefer it as well. And then you have that light at the end of the day where it's so beautiful, the sun is setting, everything is like rose, coppery tones, gold tones, light shining through hair, it's so so beautiful, like golden hour. I'm sure if you're a photographer you definitely already know about how beautiful that is so I'm going to not go on too much about it. But that's just paying attention to lighting, like that's the point. Paying attention to lighting will definitely elevate your work from like here to here instantaneously and a great way to kind of train your eye is to probably look at what other photographers are doing. So look through books, look through magazines, look through your peers and see what they're doing, see what they're using and essentially ask questions. So ask questions when you're looking at a picture like how was this lit and can you see the catch light in her eye and did they use a reflector here, a diffuser here, look at behind the scene videos that other photographers share. Ask your friends like if they're peers, ask them hey what lighting setup do you use and then of course there's a lot of workshops that you can go out to. I know that uh, my friend Felix Kins actually runs a lighting photography workshop um, in the US and he does really well with that so you, you can go to one of those things and just ask all the questions, ask all the questions, play with all the lights and just tighten up your skill set if that's what you're lacking. Lighting is another video altogether, I just thought I would mention that it adds another layer of detail to a picture and that actually leads me on to the next point which is attention to detail. Now I think a picture is really beautiful when I can see that there is thought behind it. So whether that's through composition, whether that's through the color toning, whether that's through the um, subject matter, how they connect with like the foreground, the background, um, whether that's through like the time of date was shot, are there distractions in that photo? Am I being distracted? Usually, you know, a great photograph. I'm not. Like my eye goes straight to the subject. Um, stuff like that. Just really considered attention to detail. Like that's what I find beautiful. Um, I know a lot of pictures out there do really great just based on the subject matter alone and the attention to detail falls by the wayside but for me I think a great photograph is when a lot of things are considered and they're all brought together. So yeah, pay attention to your work for example if you are a creator like myself then yeah, start considering and dissecting your image. So just be like, so where is the light hitting on this picture? Is it hitting on the subject? Is it hitting on the background? Um, is there anything in the background that's distracting the eye um, of my viewer? Um, just stuff like that. Just be really conscious about where your viewer's eye is going. So for example for myself, I love to darken the edges of my pictures just a little bit and the reason why is so that it draws the attention to the subject which is usually in the middle or off, just off the side. So on the topic of attention to detail, I thought I would bring up the topic of styling. Now this might not be as applicable if you're a landscape photographer for example, but if you're somebody who shoots fine art like I do, um, or fashion, or you know, you're doing a campaign, or a lookbook, or I don't know, even if you're just doing like model portfolios, then styling is something that really plays another role in terms of the story a picture is telling. So for example, I like to say that if you're shooting fashion, then remember that it's about the clothes and really utilize that and make the most of it. So when I'm talking about the styling, not only do I mean the fashion, but I also mean like, is the makeup considered? Is the hair considered? Um, maybe you want to add element, like can think about elements like the nails, if it's a beauty shot, uh, the jewelry, just how it's all pulled together. So I think sometimes we forget that especially in fashion photography, I honestly see this all the time and people forget that fashion photography is about the fashion. So for example, if you've got a dress that has a huge skirt and it just billows, it would be such a waste if that dress wasn't utilized. Like it'd be such a waste if you just got a shot of the girl, you know, from the waist up and she's just posing and pouting and yeah the top may be beautiful but imagine how much more beautiful and storytelling that picture could have been had you tossed the skirt. You know, like toss the dress around her. Had she been like walking and like moving, and you could actually see the movement and flow that that dress, you know, the story that dress could tell. And that's just basically one example of how to consider a element just one step further. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is color toning. I think color toning definitely plays a huge role in the atmosphere of a picture um, and also the storytelling element of it. Now I know I've mentioned storytelling 510 times and I even started with it but I think it's really important because at the end of the day as human beings we connect to stories 
and whether that's you know in written form in art um in photograph i think that when there is a beautiful story you connect more um but yeah i just thought i would say that because i have mentioned story like 500 times and i'm sure you're probably really tired of hearing about it as you guys can see color toning is super important to me i think it's something that has definitely elevated my work from when i first started creating um, and it's also why I made fine art actions with my partner and it's why we are you know creating these products that we can bring our colors into your pictures as well on that note I'm going to end this video and go to the giveaway so as you guys know I'm giving away two of my color turning collections um, to two different winners every single day so I'm going to be announcing the winners of yesterday's video later today it's actually still morning right now um, so I'm going to give it like a still the rest of the day before I make that video announcing who the winners are so that you know people have a chance. Mm -hmm.